Hi and welcome to Adorama TV's Out of the Dark Room. Joining me today is photographer Joseph Philippe Bevelard. Joseph was born to French parents in Boston and he started drawing and painting at the age of three after he lost his hearing. He then later picked up photography in school and started his own unique way of communicating with the world through photography. Adorama TV presents Out of the Dark Room with Ruth Medjbear. Thank you for joining me today. It's uh, my absolute pleasure to have you here. Um, can you explain to me, just tell me in your own words, what it is you photograph? I like making uh, black and white portraits of people. Three format with using a medium format camera. Three format camera. So it's it's always medium format, black and white. Yeah, most of the time I use medium format. Yeah, I like yeah. I like the format. I like the three format. You you keep it yeah. completely original with your borders. Perfect. Um, why is that so important to keep everything in the picture? I don't like cropping my image. No. I like to. I like to include what I see through the roof end of my camera. I turn it in my Okay, so um, you, it's important for you, for you to show exactly what is there. Exactly, yes. Okay. And I like to, to keep in consistent yeah. with the rest of the work, do everything yeah. to wear with black border, yeah. no crops. You've been photographing for years and years in Boston, in Paris, in Ireland, and all the pictures have the same format. They, exactly. They're all extremely consistent, yeah. so. Yeah. And mm -hmm. sometimes I do um, architectural work. Do you? Where I do still life yeah. and still with the same format. Okay, so you were never tempted to shoot digital color, no? Uh, I have done digital, but it's not, not the same. Not the same. Though. This is Ruth Mejber for Adorama TV. Don't forget to check out Adorama's latest contest online for your chance to win some amazing prizes. Tell me then a bit about your subjects because I've been looking at your work and you, you look for people that may not be represented in normal society, people who are on the outskirts, shall we say. I mean, is, is that right? Do you feel that? That's right, because um, I'm attracted to people that are not me, you know. That are just different from you, or? Yes, different from me and interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. When you arrived in Ireland and the taxi was bringing you from the airport, uh, from, you come from Boston and it's your first time in Ireland, and you see travellers on the side of the road, maybe with their horses and their caravans, and the taxi man told you about them, and something about that went off in your head. And yeah, it was embedded in my head ever since. Um, when I was, before I was moving to Ireland, my former teacher from my college told me about the Irish Dimpsey's work with Carl to travellers. I had a hard time understanding what travelers mean. What, and what they are, yeah. People to me that I like to dip these, but they're not. Yeah, they're not actually, dipsy, yeah, they're not they gypsies. They have their own um, ethnic group. Yeah, absolutely. So it took me years to understand them before I started photographing them in 2010. In 2010, yeah. okay. So you were learning about their culture before you started photographing them. Yeah. Travellers here, they live kind of a secluded uh, life, very much in their own community. And it can be quite difficult for someone who's not a traveller to visit and to make friends and to photograph. How, how did you do it? I had a neighbour who had travellers to okay. see them. I spoke with them. And then I see them all the time in town when I was living in Annis. Okay. And, um, and then I found out about Balintlo Horse Fair. The Horse Fair, yeah, yeah that's a big traveller uh, event. I went there and I noticed there was a lot of travellers, a lot of caravans. I went there in 2009 okay. with a digital camera and I took a few pictures with the digital camera, but I didn't have the camera with me, the film camera with me. Okay. And 
So the following year, in 2010, about my grandma, and I started falling away from them. And for the past five years, I see the same people every year, and I give them photographs. So you, you take the photograph maybe one year, keep in contact, and then revisit them with yeah, prints? Yeah, I visit the following year, and I give them the photograph from last year. Okay, so... And they were very happy with it, and then that day, Come on, I want you to take a picture of my sister. Ah, take a picture of my... They bring you yeah. around. Yes, yeah. they bring me around. The project that, you're, that you've been doing since 2009, really, do you see yourself doing another type of project like this, or are you going to stay and work with the travellers some more? Uh, doing a different project at the same time. At the same time? Yeah, I do the travellers project. I do a um, street people project. I'm going to meet people in the street. Just meet people in the street? Yeah, if I... What do you do? What's your process? Okay. Sometimes I see a group of um, teenagers, punk teenagers, you know. Okay. New you... wave, or I don't know what they call it now. Yeah. <laughs> and I hang around with them. You hang around with them? No, I don't talk to them, but I just get involved in their territory, okay. you know, standing next to them and watching them. Yeah. And sometimes I look for person I want to photograph and I see the background is looking to but I want them to know my presence before I can photograph them. Mm. And so I can make it easier for me to photograph them. If I they know. Wanna, yeah. I don't want to go up to them right away. They cannot take a picture. Yeah. You know, okay. I mean? so, just hang around with them. Like I did with the punk in 25 years ago. Okay. So I hang around with them, and sometimes I can talk with them a bit. Yeah. And then, sometimes I look for one person that would say yes. <laughs> so you pick someone to that looks them. like they're willing. Yeah. Yeah. And then, after I photograph them, they, they tell their friends they I'm cool. <laughs> and then and they'll photograph pose. their friends, yeah. you know. So, I mean, what's reoccurring in all of your pictures is eye contact that's is very important to your images yeah. so i'm trying to think how difficult it is to do street photography but get everyone to to look at you in the same way because everybody in your pictures seems to be really confident and posed and they're looking straight at you i mean is that is that one of your key features in your photographs, or is that just a coincidence? How does that well, happen? Some people are photogenic, like the trends that they, that they use to photographers all the time. Because people are attracted to them because they it's put the on a show. Yeah, because um, they're in the two beats. Yeah, they're, they're the different. Yeah. They're, they're, they're different. And they know how to pose, they're very photogenic. Yeah, but yeah. people on the street aren't in showbiz, they're just yeah. ordinary people. So. The man on the bus in Boston, I think it was 1995, he's not in showbiz, he's not on the outskirts, he's not used to people, but there he is, and he's looking straight at you, and he's very posed and relaxed. How, how do you get him to be so...? I said, uh, give me back and take a picture of you, and then he said, OK. And that's it. And then I uh, composed my camera, I mean, composed. And uh, then when I'm ready to take pictures, I have him to look right in the lens of the camera and they just look at it. Yeah. Most people would say, smile. Yeah, and, and they just uh, don't smile. Just, so just relax. Just relax your lips, relax. And just stay right in the camera. That's it. So you tell them, don't smile, just relax. Yeah. So some people it. smile too much, they say, relax. Yeah. And if they have problem smiling or laughing because their friend making them laugh. <laughs> okay. So I tell them to go away. And so you'll, you'll, <laughs> you'll tell people that they're with, go away, I'm taking a photograph. No, no well, not in a mean way, but nice politely. Way, for sure. <laughs> and then I uh, tell them to look in the camera. If they have problem calming their lips, I tell them to look down on the floor. Okay and count one, two, three, and they look up, and they look right in the land. Wow. And I take the picture. So that's your good tip on how to get a natural kind of, a natural expression.